Hi there, back for another video and thanks for joining me. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you're probably aware that I'm a big fan of half waves, especially vertical half waves when working portable, for example. So I've used uh, NFED half waves fed with a 49 or a 56 to 1. I've used a, a monoband version fed at the end for 20 meters with an LC network. I've used a 40 meter one as well, actually, not as a vertical, though. Um, and I've built my own. I've built my own sort of flower pot versions, if you like, called T2LTs colloquially. One for 10, 15, 20. You can build it from any band, really. So they work really, really well. I'm very happy with them. Now, let's say, for example, though, you don't possess a 49 to 1 or a 56 to 1 N fed uh, transformer, right, for a half wave. And you still wanted to have an N fed half wave vertical. Now, one option you could do is not to feed it in the middle, like you would a dipole, vertical dipole, or feed it at the very end, like you would an N fed half wave, but somewhere in between. Now, in a minute, I'll show you that. But one of the practical advantages of doing that is, for example, over the center-fed vertical dipole, where you've got a half wave of wire fed in the middle, you've got to bring the feed line away as much as you can for about 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be strictly 90 degrees, but something like that, which can be a bit of a faff when you're working portable, all right? Now, there might be another way of doing it where you can still get a, a half wave, a good match to 50, to 50 ohms, perform like a half wave, even when you haven't got an N-fed transformer for a half wave itself. Let me show you what I mean. As we can see here, if we take a half wave of wire, at different points of that half wave, we've got different feed point impedances. So right at the very end, for example, we usually have a very high impedance, somewhere in excess of 2,000 ohms. We put a, you know just over 2,000 ohms there as an example, okay? And that's when you'd need to use a 49 to one or something similar to bring that down to 50 ohms. You could feed, of course, your, your dipole in the middle like you normally would. And that will give you an impedance much lower, around 70 ohms, something like that. Uh, you know, slightly up or down. But that'll be a good match to 50 ohm coax. Now, if we feed our dipole, or it would be a dipole, as an off-center fed dipole, not an end fed or a center fed, but an off-center fed. And in fact, if we feed it about 14 or 15% up from the, or something like that anyway, or up from the, from the base, we have a feed point impedance somewhere in the ballpark region of four to 500 ohms. Now, if we take our nine to one unun, then if we, we can transform that down to a match, that's fairly close to 50 ohms. So that's the theory behind it, okay? And I've got a nine to one unun floating about in the drawer somewhere. So I, I took that out. And uh, here's a drawing of the proposed antenna. So um, I've taken the uh, traditional halfway formula, if you like, uh, in metres of 143 divided by the frequency. Um, obviously, you do differently for, for Imperial. It gives you just a fraction. It's actually five metres and one centimetre. So I've called it five metres length for the half wave, uh, which would be about 16 feet, of course, for those working in, uh, in Imperial or, or something close. We're looking at 10 metres here, by the way, okay, the 28.5 megahertz here. Um, so that means if we feed that about 14 or 15 percent from the base of the antenna, then what we then have is a, are these lengths. As you can see, we've got a much taller top length and a much shorter leg at the bottom. And I attach the, the top leg uh, to the, the hot side of the onion, uh, the radiator side and the bottom leg to the ground leg. OK, so that's the theory. So we're basically producing an off center fed vertical dipole. And we're going to see whether we can get a match on uh, 10 meters. So uh, I hooked up the analyzer and uh, initially uh, we were a bit long. We got a match just around 26 megahertz. So we we're a bit long. So what I then did was to prune both wires. Now, don't forget when you prune both wires, uh, what you're doing is keeping that ratio. Now, the ratio being fed 14 or 15 percent from the base is effectively six to one. So the top wire is about six times the length of the bottom wire. OK. So I uh, prune, say, if you prune, say, 12 centimetres off the top wire, you take two centimetres off the bottom wire to keep that sort of rough ratio going. And in the end, as you can see, we took a fair chunk off, actually, something around 30 centimetres off the top and about five centimetres off the bottom. And these are now the new dimensions or the, uh, the, the pruned dimensions, if you like, for the 10 metre off centre fed vertical half wave. Um, it's about 7% shorter than you would expect for a uh, uh, for, for the textbook length, if you like. Um, Some of that's got to do with the fact we're using insulated wire. I dare say the other might provide a bit of loading as well. Who knows? It could be the environment I was in. 
that's how it worked out for me. My advice if you're going to do this is go for the full half wavelength, if you like, the, the textbook length, and then prune accordingly. All right, it's what you do with a dike ball anyway, isn't it? So there we are, it works. And you can see here we've got a good match now on 10 meters, a good SWR match, um, good enough anyway. I, I ran the, the coax, I, I, I measured, but by, by the way, I measured the SWR fairly close to the feet point. Uh, I used about a three foot or 90 centimeter run of RG58, which I had free to use. I tried to run it away as much as I could uh, from the bottom leg in particular. You don't want to, want it to run par basically parallel with the bottom leg dangling down because it'll just couple with it. So I sort of brought it away at about a 45 degree angle. It's good enough. And I put a line isolator common mode choke at the end of it and then plug the analyzer into that. That's how I measured the SWR. So we got a good match then on 40, uh, sorry, on, on 10 meters, I should say. And uh, then it was time to hook the thing up and get on the air. And uh, let me show you how we got on. Germany 5, Tango Mike. That's QSL, you're 59 number 1001. Oscar the line to me at Sierra. Okay, call 5 Tango Mike, 591569. QSL, you're 59 number 2. Thank you, Tango Fox 3, Tango Hunter. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike, 59550. QSL, you're 59 number 3. Thanks, QSL, Oscar Hotel 8, Whiskey Radio, contest. Oscar Hotel 7, Kilo, contest. A Germany 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mexico, you're 59856. A QSL, you're 59, number 4, zero, zero, 004. Number 4, Oscar Golf 5, Bravo, contest. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Germany 5, Tango Mike, Ibar 5, line 820. A QSL, you're 59, number 5, zero, zero, 005. Number 5 is QSL, thank you. Sugar Baker 3, Whiskey, contact. A Germany 5, Tango Mike. Germany 5, Tango Mike, 59680. A QSL, you're 59, number 6, zero, zero, 006. Thank you, good luck. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Germany 5, uh, Tango uh, Mike, and you are 59, uh, my number to you, 1058, 1058. Uh, thank you, you're 59007007. Uh, uh, thank you for the James Bond, and best, uh, uh, best luck for the contest. 73. 73. You are, sir. Germany 5, Tango Mexico. G5, TM. Thank you for calling in, you're 59071. Roger, your 59, number 8, 008. Number 8, QSL, thank you. QR third of number 2, Alpha. Lima, Charlie, 5, Charlie, contest. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Uh, Tango Mike. Uh, Germany 5, that's Golf 5, Tango Mike. Uh, Golf 5, Tango Mike, uh, 59, 523, 523. Uh, QSL, your 59, 009, number 9. Uh, uh, number nine, thank you. Germany five, Tango Mike. Germany five, Tango Mike. Five nine seven eight uh, seven eight two. A QSL, your five nine number ten, number ten. Thank you, Oscar Hotel six Radio Echo. Oscar Italy three Victor, contest. Germany five, Tango Mike. Germany five, Tango Mike. Yeah. Good afternoon. Do you five nine nine seven zero? Uh, thank you, you're 5911, that's number 11. Thanks a lot for number 11, good luck. Good luck. Sierra Mike 2, Sierra Contest. Uh, Germany 5, Tango Mike. Germany 5, uh, Tango Mexico 59810. Uh, thank you, you're 59, number 12, 012. Roger, number 12, thank you, good luck. Test Oscar Hotel 7, Kilo Bravo, Foxtrot. Uh, Germany 5, Tango Mike. Germany 5, Tango Mike, 59912. Uh, thank you, you're 59013. 013 is rather thankful. So there we are, quick and simple. 
a nice uh, mono bander. Who would have thought we'd be using a, a nine to one onion for a mono band antenna, right? But there we are. It's all down to where you feed the the half wave. And in this case, we're about a, uh, what a seventh of the way up the antenna from the base, about 14, 15%. So decent contacts. I know it was a contest, Scandinavian contest, but uh, hey, we were all first shouts, basically. And uh, nearly all were. And we made some nice contacts, so that was good. The antenna works, it's tunable, and it, it does okay. Um, so my advice, if you're going to try anything like this, is to basically uh, do the full uh, half wavelength and then prune accordingly, keeping that ratio of six to one in terms of how much you take off each wire, okay? To maintain that 14, 50% feed point for the unknown from the base. Next thing I'm going to look at doing is possibly looking to uh, create a dual band version of this to see whether or not that would work. It won't work with an NFET half wave with a 49 to 1. Oh, hang on. There's no emergency there, I hope. Um, and it, um, yeah, so that, I'm trying to see whether the 9 to 1 would allow that to happen. So we shall see. Anyway, uh, I don't think they're coming to take me away from behind me. There's a fire truck, but <laughs> I'm going to go now. Uh, I don't think I've started anything. 7 3, we'll catch you again. And there'll be a link up there for another video. And if you fancy subscribing, there'll be a link there as well. All the best, and we'll catch you soon for another one. Bye bye now.